Inside Science. Hello, my name is Ali Jennings, and here is a quick roundup of what's been going on in the world of science this month. Now, the numbers that you see in the corner of the screen are the references to the studies that I'm going to be talking about. First, a paper that will rock your world. On the 9th of June 1994, the second largest deep earthquake that has ever been recorded hit Bolivia in South America. The shaking of the tectonic plates sent seismic waves through the earth. And this month, researchers examined the old recordings of these waves and found that they had been scattered and reflected in such a way that suggests that there's a huge, jagged range of mountains deep in the bowels of the Earth, at the boundary between the upper and lower mantle, around 660 kilometers down. And they suggest that this may have been created by vast subducting slabs of crust sinking into the liquid rock. Now, from seismic waves reflecting off rock to light waves reflecting off water. A new paper this month found that the oceans are starting to reflect light differently, and so the colour of the oceans is changing. And this is down to global warming and its effects on phytoplankton, tiny plant-like organisms that live in the seas. Now here's the paper's lead author, Stephanie Dudkiewicz, to explain. The phytoplankton um, absorb light um, they particularly absorb in the blue light and so when there are lots of them the water actually looks greener because they've taken up some of that blue light um, and so this is one way of being able to monitor um, the phytoplankton um, and there are a bunch of satellite uh, sensors which uh, do this monitoring we've made a computer model of this whole system so the phytoplankton um, the color how the how the light goes in through the ocean and what we can see from the surface of the ocean um, and we've then uh, run it out to the end of the century and what we see then is a slow change um, in the in the colour of the ocean, particularly in those blue and blue-green colour bands, um, that is telling us that both there's a decline in the, phytopla in the phytoplankton, but also that there's these change in the different types of phytoplankton. This colour change is, is very subtle. It's not something that you'll be able to go out and just see with your naked eye, um, but it is something that you'll be able to capture with um, optical sensors. This paper creates a new technique for using satellites to monitor how the whole ocean ecosystem is changing. It's like an early warning system for how humans are affecting the ocean. Less green is making the oceans bluer, but more green is making people bluer. In the largest meta-analysis of the literature to date, teenage cannabis use has been associated with an increased risk of depression later in life. Cannabis use was claimed to be responsible for 7% of depression cases in the UK and Canada, although the study does emphasise that many other things contribute to developing depression. And there was more news about depression and drug taking this month, but this time more hopeful. The FDA have approved the first new treatment for depression in years, a nasal spray that contains a surprising ingredient, ketamine, the anaesthetic and party drug. On top of that, there was also a new study published this month that found that microdosing LSD, taking the drug in very small quantities, was associated with a decreased reported level of depression and stress in the people who took it. Although, this study simply looked at the responses of users filling in an online questionnaire. No one was actually handing out LSD under laboratory conditions, so the results are not as scientifically rigorous as one might hope for. For example, we can't even be 100% sure that they took the doses they said they did. But if the findings are true, it represents a rare ray of hope for one of the most widespread and debilitating conditions in the developed world. And that's about all we've got time for this month. But before I go, let's catch up on some of the science stories that we've been following for a while. We've talked about how bees are dying, but biodiversity on the whole is in catastrophic decline across the world. So much so that it's now a major danger to global food security, as the UN warned this month. And if you want to read a fascinating article about the world's largest ecology project keeping tabs on biodiversity, I highly recommend you check out this fascinating inside science story. AI took another step towards supervillain status. A robot's writing has become so human-like that its creators have refused to release it into the world for fear of the damage that it could do. And finally, the Chinese gene-edited twins 
they have accidentally had their brains enhanced. So it turns out that removing the CCR5 gene not only is preventative against HIV, but it also improves memory in mice and has just been found to improve the recovery after stroke in humans. So who knows what else CCR5 is for? Clearly not the twins' geneticist, Hei Zhang Kui. Well, that's it from me. I've been Ali Jennings. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll leave you with these beautiful images that NASA has just taken of the surface of Jupiter. Goodbye. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.